Hi everybody. <clears throat> yes, I am back in North Carolina just for a little while. Sure did miss riding around on these North Carolina roads. This is a nice one. This is Highway 200 heading toward Concord, North Carolina if you're following along on the map. But before we get to Concord, we just went through the little community of Georgeville. We're going to hang a right on Mount Pleasant Road. And that's the road I was going to film today, or video. And uh, why I keep saying film, I don't know. Nobody uses film anymore, right? But anyway, uh, we'll video that ride. It's a really nice road. Um, I'm headed to the Cabarrus RC. That's right, that's my club that I belong to. Uh, they're having a giant scale warbird uh, fun fly today. And there should be some, uh, I think the minimum size on one of these things you have to, is an 80 inch wingspan. And they all have to be warbirds. So they'll be scale and uh, hopefully it's gonna turn out to be real good. We'll, uh, if it is, I'll get some video of that and maybe do a separate one on that. But uh, for now, let's just enjoy this road. I'm not getting on it, I'm getting on it kind of in the middle. If we went to the left here, we would, uh, there's some really fine parts of that road there too, but uh, I had to make a few stops in Locust and it was just easier for me to come down 200. So, I'll try to point out some of the things that I've noticed over the years. I've been going on this road for a long time. Uh, right back there on the right was a, uh, a little repair shop that uh, a fellow named John used to run. And I feel certain he's either retired. Oh, we got a Here's some buzzards and a dead deer. How about that for you? That's pretty cool. But uh, the uh, hope that deer gets well soon. Anyway, the uh, uh, John used to work on a bunch of cars, and my dad ran across him from somebody. I think maybe he was recommended to him. My dad had an old Lincoln. It's my mother's car, and uh, my mother was always uh, always wanted a Cadillac, and my dad was finally able to get her one, and she really liked it, but. It got a little old in the tooth, and so he decided he would take it and trade it in and see if he couldn't find another one for her. Well, Cadillac quit making cars with a little small vent window, and my mother was a smoker, and she had to have a vent window to set that cigarette. Any of you guys who smoke, you know, they, you, you want to set that cigarette, I guess, right up there in that vent window so that the smoke goes out rather than in the car. And uh, so he looked around and he was able to find her a Lincoln the big Lincoln that had a, it had a little small vent window. Now the vent window was different. It didn't have a little post. It was just a piece of glass that would slide down and then the main window would slide down. Well, that thing gave us no end to trouble. Kept falling out of the track. So my dad was really not happy that he got out of that car, but my mother really liked it. But uh, the reason I was mentioning that about John back there at his, at his shop, um, he couldn't work on any computerized stuff. Look out, squirrel, look out, squirrel. All right, he uh, couldn't work on any computerized stuff, so he was just good for mechanicals. You know, he could do brakes, he could do uh, uh, things like that, you know, change out your spark plugs, uh, anything like that. Well, this car, for some reason, the steering kept getting loose on it. And it would be, you know, if you've ever driven a big car with loose steering, it's like driving a boat. You know, just to go straight, you're doing this right here. Just like that. And so uh, that's the way this car got. And we would bring it to him and he would adjust it. There's a little, there's a little way of adjusting it. And I could have done it, I know where it was. My dad used to just enjoy the ride out here and he would sit and talk to him. My dad just loved to talk to, sit and talk to people. Uh, he was a very people kind of person. And uh, he would come out and just uh, have a good old time and watch John work on it. Or sometimes we'd drop it off if he couldn't get to it right away and we'd come back. So I became very familiar with this road at a very young age. And uh, so, always enjoyed it. Uh, I had that Lincoln, my, after my mother passed away, my dad asked me if I wanted that Lincoln and I said no, because <laughs> it was literally, this is a wide road for, for the back roads and really I would be, one fender would be on the yellow line, one fender would be on the white line. That thing was enormous, but it was, and, oh, and I didn't tell you the best part, it was lima bean green with a white leather interior. Now. I would love to have that car today, but 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago, I did not want that car. <laughs> that was not a cool car. So I let some other guy take it off my hands. I hope he's still got it. I hope he's enjoying it. 
everything else on the car was great. Just the little vent window would break all the time, and and uh, the steering was well. The steering was actually pretty rubbish at, toward the end. It, we uh, we had taken all the adjustment out we could, and we were actually thinking about getting a new uh, steering gearbox for it when my mother passed. So we didn't worry about it. But uh, anyway, this is a really nice little road through here. Uh, uh, it's 55 miles an hour, and I don't tend to run that fast because I like to enjoy myself on it. But uh, it's always a good place right here if you're pulling a trailer to pull off in the daycare and let everybody buy you because there's not really much much good passing out here. They've already got the first cut of hay, looks like. Um, they just did this, so uh, that'll be good fresh green hay there, buddy. Hell, the horses and cows will love that. But you can take a see around here. Everything is full green. Uh, crops are coming up. Uh, hey, I saw some little corn plants uh, on the way home yesterday, about that tall now, and I'm sure there's some bigger, but those are just the ones out near my house from where they planted them. But uh, I like these skies, beautiful sky, great day for a for a, a fun fly. This is the kind of sky you want because you get you get some shade every now and then, you get sun, you have uh, the clouds in the background if you want to film anything. Uh, also, it gives you a kind of a reference point. Uh, especially if you fly a glider. Now, they won't be flying any gliders today, I don't think, but uh, when you're flying a glider, uh, the thermals are underneath those little clouds right there. That's that's what's making those clouds, those little, you know, little bumpy clouds, and they're great places to fly. And if you can keep your glider between your eyesight and your eyes and the cloud, then you can see it really, really easily because it's picked out against the white cloud. But uh, you got to be careful because sometimes you'll turn away or you'll blink and that thing will go whoop. And it's gone. But uh, anyway, how do you like this road so far? We're almost into Mount Pleasant. It's not a not a real the way I went. I kind of cut about half of it out, unfortunately. But like I said, I had other things to do. But it's a nice little road. It's going to go 45 right here. So we're not far from downtown. You might be hearing a little bit of a squeal, a little squeak. That is my uh, drive belt. Uh, anytime I really run this thing hard, which I, I did a couple days ago on one of my trips coming back home, I was running 75 to 80 on the highway getting back to the house in Atlanta. When I do, uh, this will pick up a squeak and really all it takes is just a little bit of, I get a little bit of bar soap and just rub a little soap on the sides of it. That takes it away. It's probably, it's, a just, it's an adjustment issue, but really you know, once I once I lube it with a little bit of soap, and if I keep it under 75 for any length of time, you know, if I keep it under 7, 65, 70, it never gives me a problem. It's just when I really, really dogger that it'll start squeaking. But it's not a problem. Hopefully, it's not being too much of an irritant for you. But uh, could be worse. If my exhaust were quieter, you'd be hearing my little good luck bell on the back tinkle tinkle all the time. All right, getting into Mount Pleasant. It's an interesting place. Uh, I used to have a customer that lived here. He ran a place called Mount Pleasant Tractor, and it was uh, he would buy he would buy old tractors and refurbish them and sell them to people. And he was always buying parts from me. And uh, he would uh, he said all the residents here call it Mount Misery, but I, God knows why. I have no idea. I think it's a really nice place. You can look and say, we're in the historic district. You know, they can't change much on the houses without getting permission. But uh, some pretty cool little houses in here. Not all of them are spectacular. But uh, give you an idea. I always thought if I ever had to live in the city, this is where I'd want to live, a little place like this. Maybe in a house like that. I love those porches. Sit out on the porch and I like this old church here. Now this is really funny about that church. Off to our right, there's the new church they built, but but once a month they hold services in the old church, sort of a heritage Sunday. It's really kind of cool. Alrighty. Here we are at the main square. And I gotta turn right to go to the club.
some more of the historic district through here. Some of them not so historic, but really nice anyway. People take a lot of pride in them around here for, mo for the most part. You get some older homes like that that I don't think anybody's in. But what do you think of this? This guy's out here all the time. He's out here every weekend selling all kinds of stuff. He had shot, look, he had shotguns, he had banjos or guitars and toolboxes. He had about everything. Got to stop in there sometime, but the fact of the matter is I got so much junk now, I, I just don't need anything else. Unless maybe it's an accessory for my, for my bike here. All righty. Well, we're going to be down here in just a moment. We're going to turn up uh, turn up on the road we need to get to. It's called Dutch Road, and that's the road where the club is. And it's a really nice little windy road going up to the club. And I'll uh, I'll take us all the way up to the club, and so you get a chance to check it out. I like that view there. That's one of the few times you get a view in North Carolina where you can actually see a little ways. How about that? Isn't that beautiful? Really like that view. But, uh, all righty, we're going to cross the, cross the creek down here and then we'll, we'll turn into the road. Um, the guy down here, this house right on the corner, you don't think he does it much anymore. He used to be a used car salesman. He used to sell cars out of his, out of his yard. And I stopped there one time. I was looking at a van, thinking about getting a van. And he had a pretty nice van. It looked, at least it looked pretty. He used to park them right there in the front yard. And uh, had a nice one. This is Dutch Road. This is the road, road the club's on. He had a real nice van. I went and stopped and looked at it. And that thing was crap. God, on the inside it was horrible. All rusted out. But it sure had a good paint job on it. Okay, what you're seeing over to the right here that's kind of all grown up now. This used to be a minimum security prison. And guys used to sit out there on the picnic tables when their families would come on Sundays. And right now on uh, being a Sunday afternoon, they would be out there with them. But the highway department keeps all their stuff here, keeps all the stuff for the winter time for the roads. But that's it, that's the most notable thing on Dutch Road, except for the club, I think, up here at the end. This road is a really nice road to ride, but we're, just, we're not gonna go past the club on this one, so, uh, but hope you'll enjoy it. It's a nice little curvy road. They went in here, looks like they've done some work. They put in some some shoulders. There didn't used to be much of a shoulder off this road on either side. Now the club does a, a, a monthly, uh, excuse me, a four times a year we do a road cleanup. We sponsor this road and I cannot tell you how many of the little mini bottles of Smirnoff's vodka that I have picked up. I bet I picked up hundreds of them and the reason is because there's a, a liquor store back there in Mount Pleasant and I think that the county we get we cross into farther up the road here uh, it doesn't have one close by that or it's a dry county and I'm not sure which but uh, people uh, that, that's the way they do it here you buy a whole bunch of the little mini bottles and you can chug the bottle toss it out the window and as long as the other bottles in the car are sealed you're not illegal to the letter of the law you ha you can't have an open bottle in North Carolina in the car but this way you don't have an open bottle you can have a hundred of the mini bottles sitting beside you on the seat of course, you're still, if you're driving drunk, you're still breaking the law, but uh, oh, a little gravel on the road here. But um, I can't tell you how many I've found. It's just a, it's a running joke how we see how many who can win the contest of finding them. And they're almost all on the right side of the road where they're coming from town and heading this way. Okay, here's the field. Now, I don't know if you can see off in the distance. We're going to get there in just a minute, but there's, uh, see a couple of cars parked and a Thing that is our that's our flying field. We're really lucky. The man who run, owns who uh, owns all this land and rents it to us, he just does hay. And so, if you have a problem with a plane, it can more often than not you can land it in the hay and you won't have a really big problem. Now he does grow corn on this side, so you don't want to crash over here. That corn will tear up one of these planes all to pieces. Okay. Well, we'll pull in the parking lot here, and like I said, if anything going on, I'll. Uh, I'll get my camera out and we'll uh, we'll get some video. Okay guys. See you later. Bye-bye.